All right, we're gonna be painting some water today and we'll be walking you through painting this painting of a sailboat right here. Let's get to it. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I am Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. Okay, before we jump in, please, if you like the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. You hitting that like button and subscribing. Also, if you wanna see the full version of this painting tutorial, it is actually on my Patreon page right now, which you can find a link to in the description below. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. All right, that's enough promoting. Let's get to the tutorial. All right, I'm gonna start by talking about my materials. I am painting on a nine by 12 Centurion acrylic primed linen panel. And no, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. They're not paying me to say any of this this is just what i like and my oil paints is actually a mix of a couple different brands i got uh, windsor and newton i got gambling in there i have ultramarine blue elizabeth and crimson burnt sienna yellow ochre indian yellow and titanium white and i'm using linseed oil as my medium all right my panel was previously toned with uh, yellow ochre and ivory black i toned it for something else and ended up not using it so thought i'd use it for this i've actually never done a uh, land landscape painting on a panel that was primed with ivory black and yellow ochre. I usually do that for portraits. Normally I would tone it with burnt sienna, but whatever. Let's try something new today and see what happens. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my scene onto my canvas using a wash of paint. That's gonna be a wash of burnt sienna. That's just gonna be burnt sienna with a lot of paint thinner in it. So it's gonna be almost like watercolors. And yes, you can draw this in uh, with charcoal if you like. Uh, you can with graphite. I just don't recommend graphite that much because uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard that it, it can get raised through the paint uh, to the surface. So if you're gonna draw it with a pencil or something, make sure it's a uh, charcoal pencil. I'm not gonna really talk about composition in this video, but if you really are wanting to get better at landscapes, I can't stress enough how important composition is. I've made a video on composition. I'll put that in a link right above. All right, so I'm not gonna get very detailed with my drawing. I'm just blocking out the major shapes of the scene. And so after I got everything drawn in, I'm gonna start by laying in my darks with thin paint. I like to work dark to light and thin to thick. Now, if you aren't familiar with working thin to thick, I made a whole video on that and I'll put a link to that right here. All right, so I'm gonna mix up a dark green to lay in these bushes or foliage behind the boat. And I'm not worrying about leaving space for any of the highlights in the bushes. I'm just blocking it in as one dark mass right now. My goal at first is to get the whole canvas covered with thin dark paint. All right, next I'm going to move to the bushes that are a little further back and I wanna set these in the distance a little further back so I gotta bring in atmospheric perspective. Now I made a video on atmospheric perspective. I'll put a link to that above if you want more in-depth information on that. But to put it simply, I'm gonna knock out the yellows in my dark green mixture and pump up the blues and the reds. This is gonna make it a little cooler and it's gonna set it further in the background. Because as you get further in space, the first colors to drop out are yellow and then red and then you're left with blue. So these bushes are gonna be a little cooler and they're gonna sit behind our other bushes. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the water. And don't get caught up in every single little ripple in the water and all these different changes. You know, we're thinking simply here. I'm squinting my eyes I'm seeing the water is just this one large shape so I'm mixing up kind of a darkish green and it's gonna lay it all in to block in this shape of the water so as I was painting in the water and I was squinting my eyes and I was working on this section that's a reflection of the blue sky I noticed that the boat and the boats reflection were very similar to this blue and the reflection of the sky so I painted the boat that blue. And remember, this is all still thin paint. All right, so sometimes in the beginning of the painting, I'll throw in some pretty strong highlights just to get a sense of how everything's working. That's what I did here on the boat. I put these highlights in on the boat and I was able to do that one because we have a toned canvas, so we're not working on a plain white canvas. So I could actually put that on areas that didn't have paint on it yet. But I, I really just wanted to see, you know, how these highlights were working with the darks that I had, just so I give myself a better read of what was going on. And I did a similar thing with the kayak here. I didn't really paint the kayak in detail. I just put a note of color, this bright red, because this is my focal point, And I just really wanted to have that as a placeholder or a little note of reference as I work my painting so I know 
you know, generally how things are all gonna look. I like to work paintings up as a whole, working on each section, you know, jumping around. So the more information I have, even if it is just a note of information or, you know, not fully developed, it's still a piece of information that I can use to make assessments about other areas. All right, so now our whole canvas is covered with paint and we have a lot of darks in there. We can go and push back against those dark with some lighter tones. All right, since we're gonna be painting on top of this paint we laid down, we're gonna want this new paint to be thicker than the paint that is on the canvas. So I'm gonna to start to use more paint with linseed oil in it opposed to paint thinner. Now don't get so caught up in thinking of it like a formula, you know, you know, paint thinner, then medium, and then straight paint you're gonna have to feel it out and you're gonna have to bounce back and forth from one another. And I'm not gonna think about it as covering the whole canvas with medium and then covering the whole canvas with thicker uh, straight paint. I'm just gonna do it as I need it. And also don't use too much medium. A little goes a long way and I found that people tend to use a lot more medium and that makes it more difficult to paint over with future layers. So I start with my foliage behind the boat and I'm gonna lay in the lighter tones. Now a very, very common mistake that I see people make with trees or foliage is they make the highlights way too bright and they might seem really bright because there's a lot of good rich darks in your tree but if you put your reference photo in black and white you can see exactly how close the shadows and highlights are in this foliage so as I'm mixing up these lighter greens I got to make sure that I'm still staying in the right value zone of this foliage also look to adding red to your greens when painting anything natural like grass trees you know foliage anything like that because red is greens complement it's gonna knock the green down and make it seem like a more natural earth green. All right, so green is made of blue and yellow. And I like to use yellow ochre a lot of times as my yellow in this green mixture because yellow is already desaturated. It's a very desaturated yellow. So when I mix that with like say my ultramarine blue, I'm already in a good desaturated green. Opposed to if I use something like cadmium lemon that I definitely need to add some red to knock it back. All right, since I got this green mixed up and I got it on my brush, I might as well jump down and paint the reflection of it in the water. Now I'm still squinting my eyes and still seeing big shapes as I move around the water and indicate the different colors and values that I see. Don't get caught up in detail, don't get caught up in painting each little ripple. I'm actually using a lot of horizontal strokes to indicate uh, the waves or the ripples or the flow of the water. If you can, I feel like it's always best to suggest detail opposed to just try and paint it and replicate it. So when it comes to paint and reflections, it's always important to find what is being reflected on the land. That way you can just drop it straight down into the water and make sure it's lined up correctly. The last thing you want is to have something on the land that's reflecting the water, but the reflection is like off to the side or, you know, it's not in the right spot. So, you know, find what you're reflecting and just drop it straight down and put it in there. All right, so at this point, like all the elements of the scene are there on the canvas and it's a matter of pushing things, pulling things, you know, adjusting values, getting more detail detail where you want more detail. You should be thinking about things like uh, value relationships, you know, looking at a color, looking at the colors around it, seeing, you know, is this color darker or lighter than the other colors around it? If so, how much darker or lighter is it? You know, is this blue blue enough? Is this, you know, sitting in the background how I want to sit? Is this sitting in the foreground how I want it to sit? You know, if something's not sitting in the foreground, maybe you need to add some more warmer colors to it, some more reds, more yellows, like we were saying with the atmospheric perspective, you know, use that to your advantage and don't be afraid to enhance these things a little bit to get the effect that you want. Your photo reference isn't the end all be all. You know, you're gonna have to make decisions to push your painting in the direction that you want it to go. And as far as the detail goes, Think about it as just working smaller and smaller shapes, and you'll probably be using a smaller and smaller brush, and it's really up to you where you stop with it. At what point you feel that everything has been communicated that you wanna communicate. And I highly, highly recommend throughout the entire painting, especially at the end, stepping back from your painting a lot. You know, even up to you know, five, seven feet if you can. If you're working, sitting down in a chair, invest in a chair with some wheels so you can push back and see the painting as a whole. At this point, like I'm really, like I'll put down a couple strokes and I'll step back and look at it and see if anything's out of place, identify what's out of place, go in, fix it, step back, anything else not working, anything else standing out that I don't like, I, I see it, 
I go in, I fix it, and I keep doing that until pretty much the painting doesn't bother me anymore. That's how I know when the painting's done is when nothing really annoys me or bothers me. That's when I know it's time to stop because you really don't want to overpaint a painting. That can get very frustrating so know when to stop all right again if you like this tutorial please hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you want to see the full version of the tutorial it is on my patreon page which is linked in the description below also in the description below are links to all the materials that i suggest for beginners if you want to see what i'm painting on a daily basis you can follow me on instagram at fours of 43 i'm chris fornatero here telling you to go get painting whoa you're still here you made it to the end of the video that must mean you really like it in that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.